Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back on my voyage to find all of the secret easter eggs in Kerbal Space Program 0.17. As we are all anticipating the release of 0.18 soon, it would be really nice to clear up the old ones before there are new ones introduced. Anyway, this has brought me out to the moon of Ike, which orbits Duna, and I have been told by reliable sources that there is a small object in orbit which has been christened the Magic boulder. This boulder orbits in a polar orbit and uh, I spent many many hours trying to uh, come up with this thing. Well I didn't say many hours, I spent a long time flying out there. Um, but yeah the best way I've been told is to land near the poles and more or less sit on the surface in time accelerated mode looking for a tiny flickering dot as it flies overhead. Which is not the easiest thing given that there are lots of dots already overhead in the form of stars. I uh, instead I actually tried another way. Um, what I did was I put my uh, spacecraft into orbit, into a polar orbit, and then used, I had a lot of fuel, so I just processed the orbit around until I ended up coming head on towards this object and finding it. Uh, that was much more uh, interesting, but I did eventually get a bead on it, and uh, with a bit of practice I, I got the orbital elements. But I did not record this here because I forgot to hit the record button, believe it or not. So um, yeah, if you're going to be flying in orbit as well, I suggest that you go to the main menu and you disable ground scatter because uh, if you end up above the object, you don't want to be trying to pick out one tiny flickering dot uh, against a surface of tiny flickering dots that are the ground scatter. Anyway, yeah, um, second attempt to get close to this thing after I forgot. I, I have more or less aligned the orbits now and it is coming up behind me. I'm in a slightly higher orbit. It is in a 15 kilometer orbit and I am, I was more or less in a 16 kilometer orbit. So I'm coming down and I've reduced my orbital velocity so that it is catching up on me and I'm just going to kind of thrust vertically and hope that uh, it catches up with me in a reasonable time limit. Shelbus Kerman is uh, of course getting quite excited by the prospect of encountering this new and mystical part of the Kerbin universe. It, as far as I know, it doesn't have any gravity. It doesn't appear on any of the charts. It is on rails, but uh, the collision mesh may be a little bugged, I'm told. Ah, we will find out all these things once we get close. So yeah, as you see, I'm just uh, trying to keep my vertical velocity from dropping too fast. As I'm moving slower than orbital velocity, uh, the tendency is for the gravity of the, pl the moon to pull me down and dash me against the surface, and I don't want that to happen. Um, so yeah, let's. It, it's uh, of course uh, using the the nuclear rocket as well. Oh yeah, one other thing I brought along here, which uh, you can't really see, is the muon detector. Now the muon detector was a gizmo created a few versions ago by the same guy that wrote Mechanical Jeb, and the idea was it would uh, start emitting a beeping sound when you were near the monoliths. Now I had heard that this uh, magic boulder had a monolith on it, and therefore this might be an idea to help locate it a little easier. As it turned out, it doesn't help at all. It doesn't work. The monolith is just on the object. It doesn't count as a regular monolith in the game. And not only that, by uh, installing this, it was an old version. It came with an old, old, old version of the Mechanical Jeb um, DLL, which managed to ruin my rendezvous auto uh, rendezvous panels, which uh, in turn was kind of embarrassing to be losing my mechanical jab when I was trying to do some rendezvous with it last night. But nonetheless, we did actually blow up the space station, albeit manually. Now we're getting in close, so you can see it coming down below. It's hard to gauge size, but uh, given that we think it's in a 15 kilometer orbit, you can kind of get an idea of how big it is. It's probably about the size of a you know, reasonably chunky rocket. It looks roughly spherical. And uh, it's not just a gray block. It looks like there are some, you know, striations or lines on it. Uh, I'm sure if I were a geologist rather than an astronomer, I could come up with some fancy technical terminology to describe this surface. Instead, I just say that it's gray with kind of glowing green lines in it. 
Um, please, if you're a geologist, tell me what kind of mineral could glow green. I suspect that it is radioactive. Perhaps, uh, you know, that stuff that uh, they, they mine uranium from. I, I forget what it's called, but it's probably radioactive anyway. So maybe we shouldn't get too close to it. Uh, we'll find out, perhaps, when we get close enough to read the operating manual. I suspect that's what's written on the um, on the monolith. So yeah, I'm just going to use Smart ASS to approach this thing. Uh, because I don't have any of the usual uh, instrumentation or whatever, uh, I'm trying to just burn in, in rectilinear directions so that I can kind of step my way in. By restricting myself to these directions, it'll make killing the velocity a lot easier, even if the whole thing is a bit more tedious because you end up having to adjust in multiple directions at once. Now, I think at this distance, I can start to see that there is something sticking out at the top of this object, and that may be the fabled monolith. Let us move in for a closer look. We really have no idea how close we are, although I guess... Um, Given the size it was when we were 500 meters above it, we must be down to about 100 meters by now. I'm totally guessing this. I have no idea. No way to get a relative velocity indicator on it. I suppose it's just not returning radio responses, huh? Some sort of weird object that uh, doesn't respond to uh, the spacecraft's object detection radar. Wow, what is that? It's some sort of crazy substance that has fallen into the Kerbal system, presumably from an interplanetary space. We should uh, be careful with it. Yeah, magic boulder. Uh, yep, definitely got that uh, monolith on there. And in fact, I think I'm starting to see uh, some uh, information on that monolith, which uh, I can translate by uh, taking the content... Uh, inscribed on this object and writing and uh, putting it through Google Translate, I see a number of uh, important warnings from the manufacturers. And let's see, it says, warning, pregnant women, the elderly and children under 10 should avoid prolonged exposure to the magic boulder. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's try to orbit around this thing, see how close we can get. Caution, magic boulder may suddenly accelerate to dangerous speeds. Hmm. Warning. Magic boulder contains a liquid core, which exposed due to rupture should not be touched, inhaled, or looked at. Do not use magic boulder on concrete. Discontinue use of magic boulder if any of the following occurs. Itching, vertigo, dizziness, tingling in the extremities, loss of balance or coordination, slurred speech, temporary blindness, profuse sweating, heart palpitations. If magic boulder begins to smoke, get away immediately. Seek shelter and cover head. Magic boulder may stick to certain types of skin. When not in use, magic boulder should be returned to its special container and kept under refrigeration. Failure to do so leaves the makers of Magic Boulder, Wacky Products Incorporated, and its parent company, Kerbal Chemical Limited, uh, Unlimited, of any and all liability. Ingredients of the magic boulder include an unknown glowing substance which fell to the Kerbin system, presumably from interplanetary interstellar space even. Magic boulder has been shipped to our troops in the war zone and is being dropped on our enemies. Wow. Do not taunt magic boulder. Magic boulder comes with a lifetime guarantee. Well... Clearly, uh, we have to be careful with this thing. Let's see how close we can get, huh? Just coming around the dark side here so we can really see the awesome glowing green lines. Hmm. Okay, just nosing in. I'm trying to move as slowly as possible. I'm going to try and come underneath this thing. Shelbus is almost close enough to reach out and touch, but I think if I leave it here, it, it doesn't look like gravity is working on this thing. It's just, um, uh, it's not pulling me in or anything, which uh, is probably a good sign. So I'm just, oh! I think I must have taunted the magic boulder. Ah, oh, that is, a uh, that is unfortunate. And it was going so well. Shelbus Kerman was killed. 
command pod marked one crashed into the magic boulder. Yeah, I went back and only the command pod crashed into the magic boulder. All that was left was the rest of the spacecraft, including the muon detector, which is utterly useless. But we did get a good fix on the orbital element, so it'll be a lot easier to find this in the future. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>